shocking and devastating in every which way. Welcome, my mere mortalites, to another round of the book reviews. My name is Kyron, and I do these book reviews for those who want to transcend beyond their own mortality, who want to learn something from their books, to gain some knowledge, to find something interesting. Today is a rather depressing, a rather sad one. I have the book for you, Hiroshima by John Hersey. This book was originally published in 1946, so a year after the bomb had actually gone off. And it's about 240 pages in the large print version, which is what I have. So it's only a couple of hours worth of reading. It's not super long. It is the accounts of six survivors of the bomb in Hiroshima on August 6, 1945 at 8 15 a.m. So these are per their personal accounts of the bomb, the aftermath, what exactly happened. We'll really go into the details of the death, the destruction, their own physical ailments, what happened to them physically, what happened to their loved ones, the people around them, their immediate reactions, the gruesome deaths that they saw on the street, the horror, the carnage, a bit about the human spirit and the revival and the banding together of people, but most of the book is a look at the destruction that was caused. The style of the book is that it's split into five separate chapters. So these being called A Noises Flash, The Fire, Details Are Being Investigated, Panic Grass and Fever Few, and The Aftermath. And these are really concerning different time links that occurred after the event, after the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima. So it was before, during, one day afterwards, three day afterwards, and then 40 years afterwards. And speaking of the time length and the chapters, there is a lot of switching going on in between the actual chapters. So it's not one person's account across you know, a certain time period across all of these. No, it's a lot of rapid switching between the different characters in the actual chapter itself. The author John Hersey was a war correspondent. So in 1945, 1946, he actually went to Japan and was reporting on the bombings, the surrender, the carnage, the building up again of, of Japan and its resources and things like that. And he found a document relating to one of the survivors and he himself managed to interview, I believe, the all six of them and get their stories of what actually happened. And he was a proponent of or one of the first adopters of new journalism. So this is introducing fictional storytelling elements into non-fictional writings. And this was originally written as a an article so hence it's not super great length because it was published in the new yorker and received amazing reviews basically everyone read it at the time and said wow this is something special this is uh you know, a, an amazing article and was eventually turned into the book that we have here today. There's only one real theme that came to me from this book and that was devastation. And so I'm going to give a bit of a definition here of what that means. So it can be great destruction or damage, severe and overwhelming shock or grief. One thing I think this book does really well is it's told in a very flat style. So it's not super emotional. The words are rather numbing but you can really just get a good idea of the radiation sickness, the burns that were occurring to people, people's, I suppose, inner lives and how it was how they were affected, but it's not really trying to make you overly emotional and compassionate because it's told in this very short stop manner. This is what this lady was doing at this time. This is what she initially thought. You know, these were the things that were happening. These were a description of the, the wounds and what was happening, but not overly dramatic, not overly gory. It's just really straight and to the point is how I guess I would describe it. So there was absolutely devastation at the individual level. We see this in the six stories of their wounds, of their thoughts and patterns and what was going on, as well as some incidental side notes of, you know, the missing kids of all of these other different people who are just wandering around dazed and confused. However, we also get a big hole of what actually happened. So some stats were provided in the book. Most of these still hold up, although there are some refined versions nowadays because we are 80 years later, so we can maybe have a more information, better ideas. But the, anyway, this is what was presented in the book. So of the about 250,000 people in Hiroshima, Hiroshima at the time, uh, 100,000 of those died pretty soon after the blast. 
25% of this was due to burns, the scorching from the actual atomic bomb. 50% of this was from other. So this is, you know, getting crushed by debris, by asphyxiating, by the fires, etc., etc. And then 20% were from radiation and then obviously 5% from other causes as well. Of the approximately 90,000 buildings in the area, 62,000 of them were completely destroyed. So, oh, and then a whole number of other of those were also, you know, at the point of destruction where they just needed to be torn down and completely rebuilt. So, obviously, this bomb is just, it's so hard to imagine how devastating this was in the area because it is spread so large it's spread over so many people and just the impact of it was yes right on the individual and then as the whole as well the impact of the blast itself was obviously immediate but what really gets shown in this book as well was the lingering after effects that kept on occurring up so this was obviously reminder scars of your old injuries and things like that but the radiation sickness and the horror that came from that so this is people losing their hair continuously vomiting just being unable to get well and not knowing about the radiation as well the impact psychologically of having this sickness something within you which you don't know about but which is obviously happening to all of these other people doctors are trying to discover like what the hell's going on we have no idea and what with this being the first blast of atomic weapons on a large-scale population and hopefully never again will that happen uh, this was just absolutely horrific and and devastating in that way as well so i really do want to just call out the names of the six individuals because they were quite a focus in the book so this was reverend kiyoshi tanimoto mrs hatsuyo nakamura dr masa kazu fuji father wilhelm kleinsjorge uh, dr terafumi sasaki and toshiko sasaki no relation between those last two as well so um amazing stories of of all of them and their survival in this and then just knowing that these are six stories from the bucket of the huge population of the you know other 150,000 people that survived the blast and just knowing like wow this was such a huge impact on so many people in a single instance onto my personal observations and takeaways one of the things that stands out in this book is that it's not full of morality so either from the american side as john hersey was writing it and not even from the survivors themselves there's only a very small snippet of their either strong reactions either way or neither way or even just a sort of bland gray neutrality of it there's not a whole lot of saying you know oh, this was totally necessary because Japan was never going to surrender or, you know, they barbarically killed this many people in a single instance. They used this, et cetera, et cetera. The radiation, the sickness, the, you know, so many things were going on into it. So I, what I like about this book is that it's, it's a single story that makes up a part of a larger story. So what you will get in here is not the dramatic, you know, very emotional filled sort of, impactful etc etc no this book is like this is what happened this is maybe a way for you to visualize it and then afterwards if you want to add morality if afterwards if you want to look at the pictures and all those sorts of things you can go ahead and do that but this is just accounts of people on the ground of what actually happened on that day so i think it's very useful in that sense of just having the stripped away some of the the real emotional impact of it and just looking at the sort of physical details in a way also to note was this was my second time reading the story so i have had the impact initially of reading it before and this time i read most of it as it is quite short but i did skim over some sections where they were talking about the burns or the lost children and it's like man i I don't particularly want to read this part so my obviously review of this is tainted a little bit in that i have read this before and then also I really tried to not look at photos and pictures and other sources in this and really just focus on this book because, you know, there's such a rabbit hole of looking at the statistics or looking at other people's stories or other narratives that are created around the bombing of um, Hiroshima, Hiroshima. And so, yeah, my review of this is, is based on a sort of second interpretation of my reading of this book. So in summary, it's a brief snapshot of the event that changed the lives of so, so many people. 
some of the stories in this book will really imprint on you and it's going to be hard to forget. I definitely had that experience reading it again and going like, oh, I remember this section or I remember what happened in uh, to this person. I remember how he was astounded that his briefcase managed to survive, which had the important documents and the money from the, the church and their sort of savings all wrapped up into this thing. So you will remember certain sections and even though it's told in an unemotional way and it's, I would argue, not designed to elicit emotions in that real story crafting type of way, I think you still are going to tear up a bit because it is just such a brutal subject and just reading about, you know, the concrete individualized story of what happened to these six people and then expanding that out to the 100,000 extra more than that who were also in the area. Uh, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. It's hard to say whether the book was amazing or not. You know, it depends on you as an individual, depends on what you're actually looking for in the book. Um, I feel it does it justice and not does it justice in other ways, but uh, it's it's a hard read. It's, it's not pleasant, but also necessary. So uh, Hiroshima by John Hersey, a 7 out of 10 for me. And that's it for today, my mere mortalites. Thank you for joining me to this part of the video. I'm not going to ask you for your thoughts on the Hiroshima bombing and the morality of that. That would be a mind's nest of, of comments and disagreements and things like that. So I would ask you, what were your thoughts on the style of the book if you've read that? And have you read any of other books related to Hiroshima and what you thought of them? I think that would be interesting and productive. If you can do all of the nice things, like, subscribe, comment, helps me and helps the channel. And other than that, I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are in the world. Karen out.